NSO licenses this software called Pegasus to intelligence and law enforcement agencies worldwide. That's the Israeli company that operates Pegasus spyware, which has been used to monitor and track journalists, human rights activists, and dissidents across the globe. The spyware tool that's known as Pegasus looks like it's on its way to being shut down, along with the company that built it, NSO. Hey everyone, it's Yaniv Hoffman here, back with another video, and this time I'm very excited about it. It's something that many of you have asked to, for me to speak about, and this is Pegasus, maybe the world's dangerous spyware out there. So Pegasus is a highly sophisticated spyware tool developed by the Israeli cyber arm firm NSO Group. The spyware is designed to target mobile devices such as smartphones and is capable of infecting both iOS and Android operating system. Once device is infected with Pegasus, either by clicking a malicious link, the, the early versions of it, or by technique called zero-click exploit, the spyware delivers a chain of zero-day exploits to penetrate security features on the phone and install Pegasus without the user knowledge or permission. Once the phone is exploited and Pegasus is installed, it begins contacting the operator's command and control servers to receive and execute operation commands and send back the target's private data, including passwords, contact list, calendar events, text messages, and live uh, voice calls from popular mobile messaging apps. The operator can even turn on the phone's camera and microphone to capture activity in the phone's vicinity. Sounds scary, huh? But that's only the beginning. The spyware is extremely sophisticated and modular. In addition to allowing customization, it uses strong encryption to protect itself from detection by traditional security tools and as a vigorous monitoring and self-destruct mechanism. Lookout's analysis determined that the malware exploits three zero-day vulnerabilities, Trident, in Apple iOS, which I want to explain on each one a bit more because I didn't see it uh, elsewhere. So we'll start with these three, and later I will explain about the new vulnerabilities that came from 2020-2021. So the first CV from 2016, 4657, is memory corruption in Safari WebKit. And a memory corruption vulnerability exists in Safari WebKit that allows an attacker to execute arbitrary code. Pegasus exploits this vulnerability to obtain initial code execution privileges within the context of the Safari web browser. The second CV, also from 2016, 4655, Kernel Information Leak Circumvents KASLR. And before Pegasus can execute its jailbreak, it must determine where the kernel is located in memory. Now, kernel address space layout randomization, or KASLR, makes this difficult by mapping the kernel into different and unpredictable locations in memory. In short, before attacking the kernel, Pegasus has to find it. The attacker has found a way to locate the kernel by using a function call clicks a non-obfuscated kernel memory address in the return value, allowing the kernel's actual memory location to be mapped. The third CV, also 2016, 4656, memory corruption in kernel leads to jailbreak. And this third vulnerability in Pegasus Trident is the one that is used to jailbreak the phone. A memory corruption vulnerability in the kernel is used to corrupt memory in both 32 and 64-bit versions. And these exploits are different in each version. While the spyware is sophisticated, the attack is very simple in its delivery and also silent in delivering its payload. The attack starts when the attacker sends a website URL through SMS, email, social media, or any other message to identify target. The user only has to take one action, click the link. Once the user clicks the link, the software silently carries out a series of exploits against the victim's device to remotely jailbreak it 
so that the Espionas software package can be installed. The user's only indication that anything happened will be that the browser closes after the link is clicked. Now the Espionas software contains malicious code, processes and applications that are used to spy, collect data and report back what the user does on the device. This spyware can access and exliferate messages, calls, emails, logs and more from applications including WhatsApp, Gmail, Facebook, Line, FaceTime, WeChat, Calendar, Skype, Telegram, KakaoTalk and, and more. Probably I, I forgot. In order to accomplish this, the spyware once it jailbreaks the user phone does not download malicious versions of these applications to the victim device in order to capture data. Rather, it compromises the original applications already installed on the device. This is important. This includes pre-installed applications such as FaceTime and Calendar and those from the official App Store. Now, usually iOS security mechanisms prevent normal applications from spying on each other, but spying hooks can be installed. And on a jailbroken device, Pegasus takes advantage of both the remote jailbreak exploit and a technique called hooking. The hooking is accomplished by inserting Pegasus dynamic libraries into the legitimate processes running on the device. These dynamic libraries can be used to hook the application using a framework called Cydia Mobile, known to the iOS jailbreaker community and which Pegasus uses as part of the exploit. By the way, in later versions of Pegasus, user doesn't even need to click a link anymore because Pegasus uses a technique called zero-click exploitation and it's enough to send a message to the victim or call the, the phone of the victim to infect it. But we'll talk about it later in the video. But before we get more into the technical details of Pegasus, let's speak briefly about its origin. So as I mentioned in the beginning, Pegasus was developed by the Israeli cyber arm firm NSO Group, which was founded in 2010. The company is known for developing advanced spyware and surveillance tools that are sold to governments and law enforcement agencies around the world. Now, the origins of Pegasus can be traced back to a project called the Cyber Weapons Arm Race, which was launched by NSO Group in the early 2010s. The goal of the project was to develop advanced spyware tools that could be used for intelligence gathering and law enforcement purposes. Pegasus was one of the tools that was developed as part of this project. Now, Pegasus was first discovered in 2016 when it was used to target a human rights activist in the United Arab Emirates. Since then, it has been linked to a number of high-profile incidents, including the targeting of journalists and political opponents in several countries. We will see some examples later in the video. But it's important to know that on 18th of July 2021, the Pegasus project and a collaboration between journalists from 17 media organizations, if I'm not mistaken, in 10 countries coordinated by The Forbidden Story, a Paris-based media non-profit with the technical support of Amnesty International, reported that they obtained over 50,000 phone numbers of potential targets of the clients of the NSA group, the Israeli firm. The list included journalists, activists, academics, lawyers, politicians, government officials, businessmen, doctors, prosecutors, and friends and relatives of apparent people of interest for the NSO clients. By the way, there is a great book telling that uh, story written by Laurent Richard and Sandrine Rigouad. I hope I didn't smash her uh, name uh, here. And here is uh, the book, it's called uh, Pegasus. And I, I will leave links to this book. It's, it's very insightful and very good in my opinion. And I do recommend you to, to read it if you're interested in this subject. So who are the main customers of Pegasus worldwide? And Citizen Lab of Toronto University that researched Pegasus extensively developed a scanning technique to identify Pegasus operation. And between August 2016 and August 2018, they detected almost 1,100 IP addresses and more than 1,000 domain names matching their fingerprint. 
using this method, they identified 36 distinct Pegasus systems, each one perhaps run by a separate operator. Now, in more details, Citizen Lab used a technique that they call Athena to cluster the IP addresses that matched the Pegasus fingerprints into what they believed are 36 distinct operators. Each operator make use of multiple IP addresses. They gave each operator an operator name, drawn from national symbol or geographic feature of the country or region that appears to be targeted. For each IP address used by the operator, they extracted the domain name from its TLS certificates. Then they coded the domain names to generate a suspected country focus and uh, assessed whether they were political themes in the domains which might suggest politically motivated uh, targeting. Following it, they performed the DNS cache probing to generate a list of countries in which there are possible infection associated with the, the operator. And you can see on the screen the list of these findings. On the other hand, or in parallel even, Amnesty International, that like cities and labs researched Pegasus, identified 11 countries with the 50k phone numbers on the spy list, also published their own map of infection. And regardless the difference between the, the list of citizen lab and, and Amnesty International, it's very clear to say that the infection is cross countries which made the risk on privacy. Let's see some example. One of the cases is Jamal Khushoji. And Khushoji was a Saudi Arabian journalist who was critical of the Saudi government and its politics. In October 2018, Khushoji was killed inside Saudi Arabian consult in uh, Istanbul, Turkey. It is widely believed that the Saudi government was behind this murder. In July 2021, it was reported that Pegasus has been used to target Khushkoji fiance, Etis Sengic, both before and after Khushkoji murder. According to the reports, Sengic phone was infected with Pegasus in September 2018, just weeks before Khushkoji murder. The spyware remained on her phone until at least February 2019 and was used to monitor her communication and movements. By the way, NSO denied the claims that their technology was associated in any uh, way with Hoshkoji uh, uh, murder. Another example that I would like to review more thoroughly is the Pegasus being used to target individuals in the case of Ahmed Mansour, a human rights activist from the United Arab Emirates, UAE. So in August 2016, it was reported that Mansour's phone had been infected with Pegasus spyware. The spyware was able to monitor Mansour's calls, messages, emails, and location data. The attack on Mansour was particularly sophisticated, involving multiple zero-day vulnerabilities that were used to bypass the security features of his phone. So on the morning of August 10, 2016, Mansour received an SMS text message that appeared suspicious. The next day, he received a second similar text. The message promised new secrets about detainees tortured in UAE prisons and contained an hyperlink to an unfamiliar website. The messages arrived on Mansour's iPhone 6 running iOS 9.3.3. As soon as he got the messages, Mansour forwarded it to Citizens uh, uh, Lab from the University of uh, Toronto that recognized the links and claimed in their investigation that the domain name webadv.co belongs to a network domains that they believe to be part of an exploit infrastructure provided by NSO Group. The way they did it is interesting, or the way they, they suspected is interesting, be technical, so I hope you can follow. The link sent to Mansour used the domain sms.webadv.co. During the forensic investigation, they identify a network of 237 live IP addresses, including 52.8.153.44, 2.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1
to which sms.webadv core resolve and which return an SSL certificate for webadv.co. The 237 IP is also included halan.tv IP and maronoline.net IP which were the two C2 servers in the spyware used in targeting Mansoor. However, the 237 IPs and related domain names that mapped did not provide insight into the identity of the threat actor. The IP addresses all appeared to be associated with cloud VPS providers, which gave no clue as to the identities of the operators and the WHOIS information was mostly private. Yet Citizen Lab did know that several domain names had WHOIS registrants based in Israel, thainews.asia and kenyasms.org. So they examined historical scanning data to see whether they could attribute the 237 IPs to a threat actor. They noted at least 19 of these IPs had previously returned a different distinctive Google redirect response. And these 19 IPs, including an IP address that later resolved to manaroline.net, one of the C2 servers for the spyware sent to Mansoor. Then they searched the same historical data for other IP addresses that match this same fingerprint. Overall, between October 2013 and September 2014, they identified 83 IPs that match the fingerprint. And they claimed that they found several IPs of a particular interest, and the IP address of 8280202200 matched the fingerprint from October 2013 until April 2014. Interestingly enough, the domain name Quentka .com pointed to this IP address at the same time from April 2013 to April 2016. And according to the main tools, the registrant information for this domain uh, that you can see on the screen. They also found two other IP addresses of interest that match the fingerprint 8280200204 and 54251492. 214 matched the fingerprint in uh, March 2014. The former was pointed to by mail one nsogroup.com, the later one nsoqa.com. So both domains are registered to NSO group. So given these findings, Citizen Lab strongly suspected the network of domain names they uncovered was part of an exploit infrastructure for NSO group mobile spyware. But what else can we say about Pegasus? So again, I go to Citizen Lab that has released a report detailing sophisticated iPhone exploit being used, and this time against nine Bahraini activists. And these, the activists were reportedly act with the NSO group Pegasus spyware using two zero-click iMessage exploit. The first one is Kismet, which was identified in 2020 was launched against devices running at least iOS 13.5.1 and 13.7, and it was likely not effective against the iOS 14 update in September. And the second one is forced entry, a newer vulnerability that was identified in 2021 that allegedly NSO Group started deploying the zero-click exploit that managed the circumvent Blastor, which Citizen Lab calls forced entry. Amnesty Tech, a, another global collective of digital rights advocates and security researchers, also observed the zero-click iMessage exploit activity during the period and referred to it as mega lodon. By the way, the zero-click attacks are labeled as sophisticated threats because unlike typical malware, they do not require user interaction to infect a device. The later zero-click spyware is particularly notable because it can bypass security protection such as Blastor, which was designed by Apple to protect users against zero-click intrusions such as this. Now, if you still survived, I would like to provide a high-level overview of the mechanisms by which the Bahraini targets were hacked and involves 
synthesis of data from multiple phones, including phone belonging to the non-Bahraini target. So July, September 2020, Kismet, iMessage, zero uh, click. When the Kismet exploit was being fired at one of the devices running iOS 13.5.1, the log showed crashes associated with the IMT transcoder agent, which is responsible for the transcoding and previewing images in iMessage. Specifically, the crash were uh, SIG faults in the com.apple.imt transcoder preview gen erasion Q thread, while apparently parsing color profile data in a JPEG image received via iMessage. So after the crashes at IM Transcoder Agent, then invoke WebKit to download and render items from the Pegasus Infection Server. The rendering triggered the memory pressure warning. This is elf of your memory in the system in JavaScript core, and also triggered the metal shader compilation. Metal, metal shader is actually a performance shader is highly optimized libraries or graphic functions that can help application developers achieve great performance at the same time decrease work on maintaining GPU family specific uh, functions. It provides function including image filtering, algorithms, neural network uh, processing. Now in September 2020, back to one click exploit. So shortly after one of the victims upgraded his iOS to version 14, he received an SMS link to Pegasus from Mail Express indicating that the Kismet exploit was not supported on iOS 14. Now the message was a fake DHL package tracking notification. The victim may have accidentally previewed the link in the message while attempting to copy the message to send it to Citizen Lab. Now the victim VPN recorded that the link in the message was opened and redirected into a unique subdomain, okay? API, and I will, API something, and I will show it uh, on the screen. Allegedly, a Pegasus link connected to the Bahrain government operator of Pegasus named Lulu. This action did not result in the infection of the phone. It is possible that the target closed the preview before the exploitation ran. Now we are moving forward to February and July 2021, where forced entry I message zero click. Starting in February 2021, Citizen Lab began to observe NSO Group deploying a new zero click I message exploit that circumvented Apple's blast door feature. They refer to the exploit as forced entry because of its ability to circumvent Blastdoor. When the forced entry exploit was being fired at a device, the device logs shows crashes associated with the IM transcoder agent. The crashes appear to be a SIG faults generated by invoking the copy GIF from path to destination path error function on files received via iMessage. The crashes appear to be of two types. First one, type one crashes indicate that the chain of events set off by invoking copy GIF from path to destination path error ultimately crashed while apparently invoking image IO's functionality for rendering Adobe Photoshop PSD data. The second, type two crashes indicate that the chain of events set off by invoking copy GIF from path to destination path error ultimately crashed while invoking core graphic functionality for decoding the JBIG2 encoded data in a PDF file. After the IM transcoder agent crash, a citizen lab noticed that the Apple thermal monitoring returned a series of errors, exception code during the decoding uh, of reply to message properties of path, handler, dropping incoming message, and calling failure block. Then Thermal Monitor invoked the tailspin process three times. The tailspin process caused two SIG faults, but they ultimately found an invocation of tailspin running alongside the spyware. 
phone logs indicated that the responsible process for the spyware was a miffed the Apple mobile file integrity demon. Citizen Lab said that the forced entry exploit successfully deployed against the iOS version 14.4 and 14.6 as a zero day. With the consent of targets, they shared these crash logs and some additional phone logs relating to Kismet and forced entry with Apple, which confirmed they were investigating. Now, if you are still with me, I hope, there were many more acts, of course, and I will leave the link in the description for you to read more about it in your own time. Having said that, I must show the following. And according to Citizen Lab report, NSO Group has occasionally made use of visible decoy pages, perhaps in an effort to make their Pegasus infrastructure appear as incautious uh, servers. The researchers found an interesting server, start a new .NET, which displayed an open directory listing that contained a decoy page. The directory contained a file, number one, which contained HTML source code for a website maintenance decoy page. The page was entitled While Maintenance and contained the text working hard to create a new website design. Stay in touch. Exactly matched pages returned by two Pegasus servers that matched the fingerprint researchers used in their hide and seek report. These two servers were part of a group of Pegasus servers that were spun up in 2018 after a Manistee Tech and Citizen Lab published reports about the targeting of an Amnesty International staffer with Pegasus, but before Citizen Lab's hide and seek report. From the contents of Start and New.net, the researchers summarized that the following websites were part of the new Pegasus infrastructure. And one more interesting thing is that the researchers noted that these three domains were hosted on shared web hosting providers. In other words, the IP addresses that they pointed to at dozens of other incautious domains also pointing to them in previous iterations of NSO. Before I speak about the future of such uh, spywares, for those of you that are interested to dive into more technical stuff like Pegasus code structure and main function techniques and ways of operation, I will leave the detailed report of Lookout in the video description so you could download it by yourself and look at your uh, own uh, time. So the future of Pegasus and other similar spyware tools is uncertain, but it's likely that they will continue to evolve and adapt to new security measures and detection methods. Here are some potential developments in the spyware market and what they may mean for cybersecurity, again, from my point of view. First, increased demand for spyware with the rise of cybercrime, state-sponsored espionage and surveillance. The demand of, uh, for spyware is likely to increase. This may lead to the development of new and more sophisticated tools like Pegasus, as well as increased competition among other vendors. The second is the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning, and as a spyware, becomes more complex, vendors may turn to artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve their product. And this could include the use of AI to evade detection or to target specific individuals more effectively. Third is greater regulation and oversight, and the use of spyware like Pegasus has raised significant ethical and legal concerns, and there is growing pressure on the government and the industry to regulate the use and sale of these tools. This may lead to greater oversight of the industry, as well as restrictions on the sale and use of spyware. Another point is development of new detection and prevention tools. And as spyware become more advanced, new detection and prevention tools will need to be developed to keep pace. This could include the use of machine learning to detect anomalies in network traffic or the development of new antivirus software that can detect and remove advanced spyware. Last but not least, at least in my view, increased awareness and education. And as the threat of spyware becomes more widespread, there is a need for greater awareness and education among the public and organizations. 
This may involve training programs for employees of how to identify and prevent spyware infection, as well as public awareness campaigns on the risk of state-sponsored espionage and surveillance. To summarize, Pegasus is a sophisticated spyware tool developed by NSO Group, which is capable of infecting mobile devices and stealing sensitive information. Pegasus has been used to target a wide range of individuals and groups, including journalists, activists, and government officials, often with the goal of supporting, dismant, or uncovering sensitive information. Pegasus works by exploiting vulnerabilities in mobile devices, such as zero-day on vulnerabilities, and can be delivered through various means, including phishing emails and text messages. Detecting and preventing Pegasus infection can be challenging, but there are steps individuals and organizations can take to protect themselves, such as keeping device and software up to date, using antivirus software, and avoiding suspicious links and attachments. The future of Pegasus and other spyware tools is uncertain, but it's likely that they will continue to evolve and adapt to a new security measures and detection methods. This highlights the need for greater regulation, oversight and education in the industry, as well as the development of new detection and prevention tools. With that said, I hope this video was insightful uh, for you as it was fun and insightful for, uh, for me. If you liked it, please click the like button. If you are still not a subscriber, please do so. It will only take a second and this supports my, uh, my entire goals here. And until the next one, see you.